Sometime in January 2023 I posted this on Instagram where I faced four coil leaking issues due to busted oil seal. Last time I did this was 5 years back. You might find that video on the channel, but this time I used this as a chance or should I say opportunity to meet Akash in his workshop on leaded care. We know and we talk to each other on online platforms, but I never got a chance to visit his workshop, which is now in expansion phase. I almost spent a complete day in his workshop and I loved the way unleaded care functions with no discrimination in terms of engine capacity or the brand of vehicle you bring to the workshop. So a Bajaj Pulsar receives the same high quality treatment that a Kawasaki Ninja receives. In this video you will get to see a lot of tips and the right way to work on your forks so let's begin. We will start this process by removing the front wheel for which you will need to park the vehicle in center stand. At unleaded care we had the luxury of using the lift as well as jack stands which will help to keep the front wheel up and fix in place. The axle nut can be removed using 22mm socket. With the axle nut out you can pull the axle out from the other end. Make sure you don't forget the axle washer which sits at the other end. This will free out the front wheel which can be easily pulled out. The brake caliper needs to be addressed next as it is mounted on the fork. You will need a 12mm socket or spanner to take the caliper out. Along with the two screws that holds the mudguard on the fork, you need to unscrew the four 13mm nuts that sits on the inner side. Done with the wheel end, we will move towards the upper brackets that hold the inner fork tube. To lose the lower bracket bolts, you will need a 14mm socket or spanner. At the top, you will find a pinch assembly bracket on the handlebar that holds the head of the fork. A 6mm allen key or hex socket comes handy to lose the forks from the handlebar assembly. If you don't have a bench vise or power tool, then you can use a 17mm socket or a ring spanner to lose the cap nut from the fork tube before removing it from the handlebar assembly or the lower bracket. In our case, we were taking help of a power tool to lose the cap nut and I must appreciate the care in unleaded care where they used a cloth to cover the cap nut before unscrewing it as it may leave some scratch marks on the head nut plus it prevents the accidental fallouts and spills from the parts under tension inside the fork. Once the cap nut is out, you can start to disassemble the parts where you can start with the washers and the spacer tube on the top. Next comes the spring. In this video, we will be inspecting and checking the spring for its service limit after the disassembly is completed. After this, the old fork coil can be drained out. We knew the required fork coil quantity, but if you don't, then you can measure the drained oil to get a rough estimate. Next, we have to separate the inner and outer tube along with the spindle and piston assembly. Turn the fork upside down and you will find a 8mm hex bolt holding the assembly inside. The other end needs to be secured with a special tool or you can use a 8mm hex bit with the extension to hold it. All of this helps in preventing the spindle assembly from spinning inside the tube and makes the bottom end hex bolt removal process easier. After this you can carefully remove the dust seal. Akash and his team did an amazing job in doing this process with utmost care. After the dust seal, the snap ring needs to be removed from its slot from the outer tube. Once it is done, the fork tubes can be pulled and separated which takes the older seal out and also reveals the spindle and the fork piston assembly. After this all the parts from both the forks were laid out for inspection and cleaning. The fork tubes were degreased and cleaned with petrol. This is completely safe as the tubes are now free from any parts that might get affected with the petrol. Rest all the parts were thoroughly cleaned with the parts cleaner. This included everything right from the spacers to the rebound spring and the fork piston assembly. The deep cleaning was followed by a complete wiping and drying up of the parts so no contamination of aerosol and cleaner happens with the fork oil. With all the parts ready with shine, the assembly started in the same line in the reverse of disassembly. The new oil seal was already procured by unleaded care so that was a big relief for me. A thin layer of fresh grease was applied on the seal surface. This trick helps with the easy installation of the seal. The new seal was slided down from the top of the inner tube. As it can be seen, the piston assembly is already in place, so we can move ahead and bring the outer tube in its place. The 8mm hex bolt has to be secured at the bottom of the tube. 
I always appreciate the use of right tools for maintenance jobs like this, just like the use of fork seal installer to install the seal in its slot. The seal installer makes the job so easy and of course it is safe on the new seal in comparison to the screwdriver and the hammer method. Once the oil seal was set into its place, the snap ring was installed back into its slot followed by the dust seal. Now it's time to fill the fork with fork oil, 325ml is the recommended quantity per fork but if you go by the books then it is usually recommended to fill a little extra and then use a fork oil level gauge to measure and if required pull out that extra quantity. I was happy to see the same process being followed at the unleaded care facility. And I strongly believe that the proof of quality work can always be found in such details for example measuring the fork spring for any deformation and service limit which is missed by many. In my case, the springs were in good condition, measuring way above the service limit of 428mm. The spring, the washer, the spacer followed by the top washer were put in order which was finally secured by the cap nut at the top. With the fork assembly done, the forks were installed back along with the mud guard and brackets in place. The wheel and caliper assembly were again mounted back on the fork and finally everything was torqued as per the torque requirement. I think this comprehensive video should help a lot of motorcycle riders who are looking to get their suspension overhauled. Usually fork oils should be replaced every 15,000 to 20,000 kilometers depending upon the use. This time I have tried to experiment with the Motul 100% synthetic factory line fork oil with 7.5 weight that is labeled as light and medium. Let me know in the comments if you want a detailed video on the same. I guess that's it for this video and I hope you guys have liked it.